I've been experimenting with this Prog Rock 2, a programmable crystal from QRP Labs, which is designed to generate radio frequencies from the SI5351 SI chip. Also, a few months ago, I built a Rockmite transceiver, which I love playing with, but it only has one frequency with a small offset. So when I heard about the Prog Rock 2, I wondered if I could build my own direct conversion receiver, which would help me understand the circuit a bit more, and maybe use this Prog Rock 2 as a crystal substitute. And here it is in my receiver to create a crystal controlled receiver with multiple switched frequencies. I was also really taken with this sentence on the QRP Labs website, which says, for example, if you want to select bank five, ground the bank zero and bank two inputs, brackets, four plus one equals five, brackets. And that mystified me, and I'll come back to that later in the video. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at the board, connect it to the computer, program it with some frequencies, and then show how I connected it into my test receiver and see how I got on with creating a receiver with multiple frequencies. This is a very small board and you could use it in the space of a crystal. I've attached some headers to one and it's a bit bigger and sprawling than that while I test it. We'll take a proper look at it in a moment. The Prog Rock 2 is fitted with a micro USB connector so it can be plugged into a computer and then the 24 possible frequencies can be set with a bank of eight for each clock output. So there are three VFOs or clocks and each one has a separate output. In the manual, there's information on doing this with Linux and some mention of Windows, but I didn't see any detail on this. So let's go to the computer and I'll show you how I set it up. I'm going to use PuTTY, which is a free terminal emulator program to talk to the Prog Rock 2. If you plug the Prog Rock 2 into a Windows machine, it will appear in the device manager as a COM port, just like an Arduino or any other serial device. You can then tell PuTTY where to look, check the configuration and save it, as you can see here with mine, which at the moment is COM7. When you open the device, you see a blank terminal and then pressing enter lets you enter the Prog Rock 2 configuration. Here you see the three columns of eight frequencies for clock zero, clock one, and clock two, and you can scroll through them using enter for forward and P for back, changing the frequencies as you go. Pressing S saves the frequency setup, after which you can close the terminal program. So here's my experimental configuration, and you can see I've set all of the clock zero bank to typical frequencies where you're likely to hear signals on the 20 meters or 40 megahertz band. I've put the Prog Rock 2 onto a prototype strip board and attached various pins and connections to it. You can ignore most of them, it's really messy, but the actual Prog Rock 2 is here and the three bank selection contacts are here. And each of those goes to a switch which will ground it. I've taken the output of clock zero or VFO zero and sent it via some attenuation to a mixer. The same chip actually is in the Rockmite. The other input of the mixer is getting RF from a resonant half-wave antenna through a bandpass filter, which I also made from a kit from QRP Labs. The output from the mixer is going to a basic LM386 amplifier because that's a chip I had readily available. So this is a rough and ready receiver which I've built in a modular way onto a 3D printed base and I can easily remove and work on or change each module as I experiment. At the start, I mentioned my bafflement at the statement that grounding bank zero and two gives you four plus one. So I gave it some thought and realized that bank contacts zero, one and two are representing columns of a binary number. So bank zero is the first binary column, zero or one. Bank one is the column for decimal two and bank two contact is the column for decimal four. Grounding bank zero switches it from zero to one, grounding bank one switches it from zero to two, and grounding bank two switches it from zero to four. 
None of them grounded gives us bank zero frequencies, and then in combination we get one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. A total of eight choices of frequency for each clock or VFO. So here's some video now of the radio working during a busy 20 meter competition. And in the clip, I'll show the frequency changing as I ground the bank select contacts in sequence from zero to seven. Right, so it's Saturday afternoon and here's the receiver going. These three switches are controlling the banks of the prog rock. So at the moment, none of them, none of the three bank input selections are grounded. So this is on bank zero. We can clearly hear the crazy competition CW. So now grounding bank input zero gives me binary one. So that's bank one. And then the second column, bank two. Is that right? Yes. And then bank three together. Third column is bank four change frequency quite a bit higher. So we add one is bank five. So naught plus two equals five or four plus one equals five. So then six, two and four and seven. Oh, nothing on that frequency at the minute, which is a bit higher. So all together, if you include, oh, there we are. So bank select contacts, zero, one, and two, give a choice of eight different binary numbers or decibel numbers from naught to seven, giving eight different choices of uh, output frequency for that one VFO. And you could repeat that two more times with the other two VFOs. So let's just quickly go down again. Back to zero. Lots of CW coming through, sounds really good. There's still plenty of work to do. Rather than using Arduino or another processor, this offers a way of simply using the SI5351 chip with selectable frequencies. And I wonder if it may be possible to use it also as part of a transceiver using different clock outputs to provide an offset between receive and transmit. So I'm going to experiment with that and hope to come back with a video about it in the near future. I'm a huge fan of QRP Labs. Hans Summers and his team make technology accessible to lots of us in a very affordable way, along with lots of very helpful and useful information. I think they deserve all the support we can give them. Anyway, I've enjoyed making this video. I enjoyed using the Prog Rock 2. I'm looking forward to how I can develop this further and I'll be back soon with more videos about radio, electronics and technology in general. And so now I'm going to carry on with building my modular transceiver and see what I can add to it next. Thanks for watching.